Praise the Lord for allowing us to be here another time. Thank God that we are alive. We have breath within us. And we find ourselves in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we are picking up from our study where we left off last week. Um, we are in the book of John. We are doing a study of the book of John, but we, we spent some time in looking into, um, well, relationship between husband and wife. And uh, the question that we, we first ask is, why do women or wives disrespect their husband? And we were dealing with that last week. So we are going to pick up from where we left off last week and try to see how much um, grounds we could cover today. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today, even as we gathered here, Lord, to discuss your words. We ask that your presence will be with us. Father, we pray that self will be defeated and you will be exalted in our presence, O God. Our eyes and our ears will be open. Help us, O God, Lord, to be humble in your presence, dear Father. Manifest by your spirit in our midst, Lord. Those who are on their way, we pray that you'll gather us in this place together as we prepare our hearts to receive your blessings. Bless us, O God, in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I, I put uh, a few um, stuff here together, and this is what we are dealing with. And uh, what we are dealing with now is what men or what husbands are saying in regards to um, the woman in their life, in regards to their, um, their wives. And as we said that a lot of men complain about wives disrespecting them. And... It seems as though even though we as men, we complain that our wives disrespect us, um, the wives, they don't really see, what we complain and say is disrespect, they don't really see it as disrespect. So it seems as though when uh, a wife looks at something, she, it seems as though she has seen it different to the way that her husband will see it. And uh, we will get into some of, uh, of that today. So um, we dealt with um, looking after the kids last week, and we, we, we said that, you know, if the husband is disciplining the kids, and you're supposed to allow him to discipline the kids, once he's not crossing the line where he become abusive, if he become abusive, then you need to um, step in, talk to him, let him know what he's doing is right. But if he's not abusive, you're supposed to allow him to um, take control and to discipline the children. It's, it, it's uh, both the father and the mother responsibility to discipline and train the children. Um, it's not the school responsibility. It's not the police officer responsibility. Um, society today is saying that kids belong, they don't just belong to the parents. Kids belong to all, the whole community. And it's the whole community responsibility to train the kids. In a sense, I, I could understand a little bit of what they're saying, but it's not the community responsibility to train your children. It is our responsibility to train our children. And I understand, in a sense, back in the islands, you know, we used to, people used to watch one another kids. Because if your kid is in the community and they're doing something wrong, you, they, um, there are other parents, you know, who will, you know, correct them. And even, they, they, even though they might be doing something wrong and they see somebody that they know from the community, they will get themselves straightened up. So in that regard, I understand that. But in society today, they're trying to say that the, the major responsibility to train children is on the community. And uh, that is not true. The, the responsibility to train and to discipline um, anybody that is in your household. It's within um, that household, they have the jurisdiction and they have the prerogative to train up their children and to lay out the rules uh, that is applicable to that house. So we, we dealt with that last week. Okay, um, it said, um, <clears throat> okay, you answer question for him. Anybody here answer question for your husband? Somebody put a question to your husband, and before he could open up his mouth to answer, you know, you have the answer. Because uh, to, uh, the truth is, eh, 
women seem to have the answer for everything very quickly. You know, they, they seem as though they gather things together a lot faster than us as men. Am I right? Or am I saying something wrong? Sometimes me and my wife sit down and be watching a, a, a television show and, you know, she will already get what they talking about or what's going on when I just feel it and, and I don't even understand what's going on yet and then she already, you know, put things together. So it, it seems as though some uh, women or most women, they're a lot more quicker than us as men and uh, a lot of women, they, their tongue, it seems as though they could put words together more. When a man, most men, uh, some, of, some of us, most of us are a few words, we don't say a whole lot. But a lot of women, they tend to have a lot to say. But the thing is, when a question is put to your husband, you're supposed to allow him to answer. You know, uh, there are times I used to watch um, Richard Roberts. I don't know if you guys ever watch Richard Roberts and his wife having their television program. Richard Roberts will have a guest on his program. And everything, she just jumped right in there. She just take over the whole thing. And uh, just... You know, anything, anybody say she have the answer for it. You know, you're supposed to allow your husband to answer. If somebody put a question to him, let him answer. You know, but I think sometimes uh, the wife maybe know that the husband is slow in speak, and she probably thinks that if she allow him to answer, maybe he might say something that is embarrassing, and because of that she tried to um, get the whole thing woke up. But you need to... Let him answer for himself. We as men, we don't like it when our, our wives answer questions for us. That is, one of the, that is one of the ways that men think that women, their, their wives are disrespecting them. Is when they answer stuff that they know they're supposed to answer. Even though you know you're going to stumble through. Let him stumble through and answer. If by stumbling through, he might become uh, more efficient in doing that. So let him answer for himself. Your husband is trying, uh, uh, okay, when someone directs a question at your husband, he is fully capable of answering for himself. He doesn't need you to interject with what you think his answer is. In fact, you might learn something new about your husband taught if you let him speak for himself. So you need to let him speak for himself. You, you don't consult him on major decisions. Anybody here fall in that bracket? Any wives here fall in that bracket? Major decisions that you're supposed to um, consult your husband on, you don't consult him on major decisions. It's, it's a bad thing, whether it's on the wife part or on the husband part. Anybody who making decisions in a relationship without consulting the other, it's totally wrong. You don't make no decision, especially important decision. You know, you have to consult um, with the husband, you have to consult with the wife because what we have to understand, when you become husband and wife, anything I put my, my name on as a husband, my wife is responsible for it. If I go anywhere and I sign for anything that involves money or whatever, if I can't pay, who is the authority looking for? No, uh, if I can't pay, oh, if you can't pay she, yes, if I can't pay it and she have income yeah, exactly. that could pay, they, they'll take it from home. Right. If you declare bankruptcy as a man, you think they're going to just let you go free like that? No. They're going to dig up all the banks and all wherever your wife have RSPs and whatever investment that she have, and they're going to come after every cent that she has. And until they, they're going to take every cent that your wife has until they could recover back whatever they have, right. they, they, they need to get. So on both sides, whether it's the husband or the man, you're making decisions, you're supposed to consult with your husband, consult with your wife. Uh, yes. You think that's the reason why some husband and some wife don't want to have giant bank accounts? Well... Maybe so, maybe so, but it's a bad thing. Okay. It's, a, it's a bad thing when, when, when husband and wife don't have, um, you know, joint account or, you know, have account that 
they um, each have access to. I don't believe that you're supposed to have no um, off-limit account. You have an account that you alone have access to. And, uh, you know, you know what's going on inside it, and your wife don't know what's going on inside it. I believe that in finances in the family is supposed to be commingled. All the money is supposed to mix up together. Even though one person going and do different things, but the money still mixed up together. You know, the, the money comes in, it go into an account, it go into, even though it's different bank account, even though you, you all have different account in different banks, but still, it's your wife, your husband, everybody's supposed to have access to it. Okay. But the, the, the thing is, we have to learn to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. Men, husband have to learn to be disciplined where spending is concerned. Wife have to learn to be disciplined where spending is, is, is concerned. You know, I know sometimes it takes a while, you know, as a, as a husband, it, when you just get married, it takes a while for you to get accustomed with your wife to know what kind of person she is and know what kind of, um, you know, taste she have, she have where spending is concerned. Sometimes uh, right up front, you know, especially if you is the one that, you know, bringing in the bacon, Sometimes you, you kind of want to give them a little time until you know, you know, how they are, they, where responsibility is concerned. But once you find out that your wife is a responsible person, you're not supposed to have no half-limit account and have no special account for you and she have her own account. No. Um, anybody, I'm telling you, any couple who want to go down that road, financially, you're not going to progress the way you should if you have an open account and everybody, every, uh, you know, everybody, you sit down and you talk about what you're going to do. You know, the wife might be going out to do something and say, listen, we have this thing that we have to go and do and, and this amount is going to come out from the account. And, you know, you have times when I go in the bank and I do certain things, pay certain things, whatever. I'll come back and say to my wife, say, listen, um, the account is at this level right now. So, you can't go and buy nothing extra right now because it, it just have enough money to cover the, the bills that will come out um, for this uh, month. So I just, you know, I, I highlight her to that. I let her know what's going on. But, you know, she have access to go in and do whatever she needs to do. But the thing is, we together a long time. Mm -hmm. So I trust her. Right. When we just got married, I used to go to the bank. And then, you know, I decide, well, let me just... Give her some freedom. Give her some slack. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I notice is that as I decide to give her some slack where, you know, going into the bank is concerned and making these decisions is concerned, I find that the relationship, it was okay before, but I find that because of the fact that she probably noticed that I, you know, give her some more responsibility and she probably believed that I trust her, it kind of brings us a little bit closer. You know, things, you know, because you, you, you express trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe if you just totally, you alone making all the financial decisions and you alone going to the bank and you alone doing that and she don't have any access to this account and the only um, account that she have access to is the one that don't have a lot of money and stuff like that. It's not, it's not good. But then, as I said, if you have a bad spending wife, you have to try to um, put a rein, put a muzzle on her, you had to try to rein her in and get her to understand what, you know, is important. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we, we, we said that um, um, marriage is a partnership, and yet you make major decisions without checking with your husband first. As, as a wife, you're not supposed to go and sign no... Um, surety. You're not supposed to become no surety for nobody unless you find out from your husband. And you're not supposed to be surety for nobody. You know, I, I know ladies who get in trouble, go and become surety for friends, you know, sign their name on the dotted line where a house is concerned and sign their name where, you know, maybe a mortgage or maybe rent or whatever, they, you know, apartment and stuff like that and the husband don't know anything about it. Anytime you sign your name as surety for anybody, 
Who you think they're looking for? If the person run out on the contract, who you think they're looking for? Is you. Is you who have to um, bear the um, the thing. And uh, my my personal decision is that I am being surety, especially where mortgage is concerned. If a person need to buy a house and they need me to be a surety, unless it's Andel and my kids and them, and you need me to be a surety, it doesn't matter how, you know, brother in the church you is. You can't go to buy a house and expect a next person to be surety. And sometimes we have to understand that we are putting brothers and sisters uh, in jeopardy and we are putting them on the spot. If you need me to be a surety for you to buy a house, it means that you don't ready it. You don't ready it because a house is a big investment. And if I become surety for somebody to buy a house and they're going down, we sell the house, and if, because sometimes you buy a house and you, you pay too much for the house, and when you sell it, you don't get back that amount. If that happens in that case, it means that if I have a house, they're going to put a lien against my house. So that's why the Bible totally against being surety. And in, in my opinion, the only person I will be surety for is my kids. Because I know that, you know, when, I, when my time comes to go, whatever I have, whatever remains back, it goes to them. So it's my responsibility to try to help my kids then. You know, although I won't run into some, something that I know that will fail, but it, it's your, your responsibility as a parent to help, um, other pe- uh, help your kids. But um, brothers in the church, sisters in the church, and other people on the outside, you don't be surety for nobody. It's a dangerous thing. It's very dangerous. And, you know, when I'm talking about these things, I, I don't really talk with water in my mouth. It's the same thing where lending money is concerned. Lending money causes friendship to separate. You know, but I, it, not everybody. Not, I'm, I'm not going to say every person you lend money to or you're going to break up friendship. But, I, you know, when you talk to a lot of people and you ask them why you and that person not friends anymore, it always seems to involve some kind of um, financial um, thing. So, you know, be careful where these things are concerned. You know, sometimes it is best to take a $200 and say, listen, I could give you $200, you know, but I can't give you, I can't lend you 1000 or I can't lend you 2000 Give them 200 and don't, don't expect to get it back. And it keep the, the relationship intact. So, don't make no major decision unless you discuss it with your spouse, with your husband, or with your wife. You know, sometimes, my wife will have decisions to make and decisions that, you know, she could do on her own. She could make it on her own, on, on her own. But still, she does still call me and say, Eric, what do you think about this? For instance, uh, she have a choice between two jobs. You know, she will say, Eric, what do you think about this? I say, well, it's up to you, you know, you have to make that decision. But she still wants to hear what I have to say. Yeah. You know, because uh, it's a good thing when our, 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 our spouse trusts us mm-hmm. and they develop trust and confidence in us. And it's good when somebody could call you, even on a decision that they could make on their own, but they still call you and ask you, what do you think? They value your judgment. And we're supposed to value one another's judgment. Praise the Lord. Yeah. When, when we make decisions without consulting the other party, the other party feels like a second-class person in the relationship. They feel as if, well, you don't value them. You know, and that is, that is disrespectful. So, you know, areas like that, we need to um, look into that, straighten that out. Get that straightened out. All right? Okay. Um, Pastor Dr. Nama, yes. You say in the church, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you might have sisters, right? Mm-hmm. Or brothers. They want to rent a place. They, and they, they, they're not landing here. They can't pay. And sometimes you have to help them. Yeah, well, listen. Uh, right now, I I I have two. You can meet them on the street. I have two um two um persons that uh, I my name is on their lease. Two persons, and a third person approached me to do it, and I told them I can't do it for a third person because I already have two persons I've already done it for, and the person was upset with me because I, how are you gonna be upset with me? I told you I already have two people that I, I already um. The, 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 the thing is in my name. And a third person come in. I can't do it for a third person. And uh, the, 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 this person was upset. So uh, these things, when you do these things, 
You have to know who you're doing it for. There, 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 there are some people that I will loan money to. And I'll close my eyes and loan it to them. Because I know for sure that they'll pay it back. You, know, you guys remember Sister Susan who used to come to this church? She's a person, if she wants some money to borrow, and she asks me to lend her, I'll give it to her, closing my eyes. Knowing that, knowing that even though she can't pay it back on the appointed time, Every time she sees you, Pastor Duncan, you know, I have that money, you know, and I have to pay you back. And, you know, and she keeps reminding you, I'll go pay you, you know, I don't have it right now. And she's not letting you forget. But you have some people, you lend them some money, and they totally forget. <laughs> they just pass you watching your face as if, well, you know, you never even lend them anything. You know, and that's, that's the difference, you know, in, in, in people. So that's what I'm saying. It have people that you could lend to. For instance, if you lend some money to somebody before and that person pay back and there's no problem and they're in a difficulty again and they want to borrow something, yes, you could take a chance. But the, the, the thing is, what we have to understand too, in, in Canada, most of us, we don't really have money. <laughs> most of us don't have money. And even, even people who you see have a house. People who you see have a house, have a car, they don't have no money. I have a car, my wife has a car, I have a house, but I don't have no money. I, I live in from paycheck to paycheck. If, if, if something should happen and I lose my job, you'll see how fast I will have to think about what I'm going to do. I don't liquidate some, some stuff. Because, you know, when my paycheck comes in, it's just to pay this, pay that, pay tithe, you know, and, and stuff. So I don't really have anything much. But sometimes people just look at you and figure, well... You have money. The people who don't have house and the people who don't have a car and they're working, they sometimes will have more money at their disposal than somebody who have a house and have cars. So that's how we have to look at it at a time. And it's, it's, it's reality. Okay, so um, you have to use your judgment when these things happen. You have to use your judgment. You know what decision to make. Um, Mm -hmm. So we, we, we deal with that. Don't make major decisions without discussing it with your spouse. Do any of these songs familiar to you? If so, it might be a good time to apologize to your husband or to your wife and set things straight. Any of these things songs familiar? Anybody, anybody think it's necessary to um, apologize to um, your spouse? Any, any wife here think it's necessary to apologize to her, to her husband? Our husband feels it's necessary. After hearing some of the things that we're talking about here, do you, the light shine upon you and you think, maybe I should apologize to her or maybe I should apologize to him. Ladies, is any one of you ever apologize to your husband? <laughs> no, you, you, ever, you ever apologize to your husband? I'm going to put you guys on the spot. See, some again, you ever you apologize to your husband? Never. <laughs> at least, least you're honest. <laughs> Brother Mackenzie, I, I could, I, I'm going to answer for you. I believe you apologized to her already. No? Yeah, but when, when, I, when I apologize, she said, she said, Oh, okay, because you do it. <laughs> you say sorry too many times. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but you, you see, listen, um, I, I know um, there's some people who have a habit of messing up, but sometimes you, you, you mess up and you really feel guilty, you feel sorry. And if you mess up and you feel guilty and you say sorry, it takes a burden off of your chest, off of your, your life and everything. You know, and that's the first step towards forgiveness. And if a person comes to you and says they're sorry about something, you have, to, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt, you know. You have to give them the benefit of the doubt. And even though that person messing up a whole lot of time and always asking for forgiveness, and you messing up all the amount of time but you're not asking for forgiveness, that person's still in a better ship than you. That person's heart, where God is concerned, their heart is going to be more free than you. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Oh. You got to get a little bit of satisfaction. <laughs> but we, we, we need to, when, 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 when situation arise and you need to apologize, you have to be quick to apologize. You, you know, you have to be quick to say you're sorry. Quick to make amends. Quick to make amends. But what I, what, I, what I found out is that women tend to be hard to say they're sorry. I don't find that at all. Yes, well, well, I'm telling you what, in my, in my um, yes, I, I will say I'm sorry, but, but my, my wife does say, what, what, what am I supposed to be sorry about? That's what she said. Even though she wronged, she will still say, what am I supposed to be sorry about? Even though they know they're wrong, they wouldn't, that word, they're sorry, they won't really say it. When uh, a, a man, I, I, I find, even though he probably don't really mean it and he just want to say sorry so that things could just pass, men tend to be quick to say that they're sorry. And, you know. Honestly, I discover, I discover too, I discover that um, it, what you rightfully suggest now is true that 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 some some women don't believe what they say is wrong. They believe that um, whatever they say is is right, is right. Whatever they say is right. Mm-hmm. And 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 um, what, what, if you try to tell them something, and as I guess who, as you say, men, we, we have few words. It's not to say we can't speak plenty, mm-hmm. but we have few words. And I believe if I say, well, that, that is the um, almanac day. I tell you over and over that is the almanac. Why you come again and ask me, is that the almanac? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I, you know? That, uh, that has kind of bring out that has bring out the kind of heavy tone talking, r- r- right? You yeah. know, because when when she come back, for instance, uh, we, I'll say, well, do that, and she'll still come back and ask me if to do that, and come, then the heavy talk, the heavy tone talking oh, yeah. will come out, and then they'll say that you're, you're angry, you're angry and you're vexed and things. But it's because of the fact that you you you, you already say, well, we're gonna do that, but they still come back and ask. <laughs> but you know, we need to be patient. Yeah, well, well, this is the thing. Is it? That is the thing. Is we have to learn to develop to be patient. Right. You know what I mean? And and the thing is that, that I I am discovering and doing that even if I'm I'm right, I just give up everything okay. and I try to do what I know I'm supposed to do. Right. You know what I mean? For instance, let me give you an example. Not too long. I know, but this is this is very important mm. and sometimes sometimes. It is is what killing us mm-hmm. and and how we in a kind of bondage. I came home there Friday, mm-hmm. and and I'm a man. When I come home, I I want my food. Even if I eat outside ten times, when I come home, I want my food. I don't concern. When okay. I come home, I want my food. Even if I eat it, I want my food. There. Okay. But, you know. Okay. So 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 when I came home, the wife said, "Me and cooking no, because no meat there." He said, you don't cook because no meat day. You have to have meat to cook. I said, I ain't said that out, you know. Mm-hmm. I just, but that is why. Manager. So what I did, I learned now that first time I used to go outside and just, you know what I do now? I go. And I take some carrots some cabbage and some peas and things. And I put it together and I cook it. And when I don't cook it, I share out our food and I give it to her. And she sat down, she bites, she said, ah. You can save my life. I can save my life. You can save my life. Yeah, you can save my life. But but not over there to cook. But I saw she something was there. Well, when you said you said the president day, you said that that, that was very good. Oh. Save my life. So I learned now. I will do those things without any fuss. Right, right. But but okay. But did you do it with a piece of? Did you cook when you was cooking? Were you peaceable? You were angry. No, Were you angry? No, no. I when she talks, she say, I say I don't vex, I don't angry. Okay, you. okay. I'm not angry with you. All right. But I, what I'll show you, that you say there is nothing there. Right, right. But I show you there is so many things there. Right. That you can put together and right. Work, and I do it, and it's not one time. I do it most of the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um.
Just like wives need love, husbands need respect. How many wives here need love? How many ladies here need love? You guys need love? Nobody don't need no love. Nobody don't need love? Nobody need love. Oh, you get it. All right. Well, that's what you're You get it. You don't can't say. Well, that is what um, most wives cry out that they need love. That they need love. But just like how the, the wife have a craving for love, it's the same thing the husband have a craving for respect. Just like how you want your husband to love you and to cherish you and, you know, bring flowers and to tell you ten times a day that he loves you and stuff like that. It's the same way man, a man crave respect. The same way. Even though they don't come out and tell you that. But every man have that craving within him for his wife to respect him. And when he don't get that respect, he, he, he feels bad. He makes him feel less than a, than a man. And he makes him feel angry on the inside. So that's why it's very important to um, respect, um, you know, um, uh, your husband. Very important to respect your husband. The, your husband should be on a pedestal. Wives should have their husband on a pedestal. And the same thing too. A husband should have his wife right up there too, you know. And respect, it goes uh, both ways. You respect him, he respects you. Nobody's supposed to disrespect anybody in the relationship. You're not supposed to tell your wife nothing to hurt her feelings. You're not supposed to tell your husband anything to hurt his feelings either. Everybody, you're, you're supposed to love each other, care for each other. You know, this morning I was looking up on the internet the definition of love. And what they say on the internet is the most researched subject on the internet. People just want to know what is the definition of love. What is love? Anybody know what love is? What is love? Okay, let me get this out of the way. Love is not sex. So we get that out of the way. Clear that out of the way. Without sex, without thinking about sex, what is love? Love is kind, sympathetic. Love is gentle. Love is good. Love is caring. Okay. You know, and things like that. Right, love is all that. But let me add this to it. Love is a commitment to do all of these things that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. all of these understanding and gentle and meekness and cherishing one another and compromising with one another is a commitment mm -hmm. to do these things. Right. Now, I want to show you guys something. Now, I have a mortgage, and I know you, know you guys probably have loans and have mortgage and have stuff like that. I have a job. It means I have a commitment to go to my job. Right. But I don't love my job. I don't love going to my job. You love going to work? Anybody love going to work? But I have to go. I have a commitment to pay my mortgage. But I don't love paying my mortgage. I have a commitment to pay the taxes on the house. I, I hate paying it, but I have to do it. It's a commitment. But the commitment to your spouse is different. You can't do it out of, uh, you know, oh boy, you know, I have to love this woman. You know, I have to be kind to this woman. You know, I just fighting to be kind or you're fighting to be um, understanding towards or oh I hate being understanding towards her, but I'm just trying to do it. No, you're not supposed to be like I fighting or hate to pay my mortgage or hate to go to my job and I'm still going. We can't have that in marriage. Marriage has to be different. You have to you have to love, you have to be kind to your wife and you're doing it and you you love her. You have to understand her or understand him and you love him while you're doing it. So love has to be within it. Yeah. It's a commitment to do all of these things that we mentioned to your... Well, well, you're 100% right. You're 100% right because what you said there, what you say is a natural affection. He's 100% right because I was reading this morning and one of the definitions of love is that it's, a, it's an affection or... or uh, for lack of a better word, it's something just like hunger and pain and thirst is something that comes natural. Hunger comes natural. You don't have to induce hunger. You don't have to induce uh, being thirst. It, it, it comes natural. And it's just like what the, the elders say. It's a natural thing. But the thing is, even though it's natural, love can die. You know? Love could die. Love is like, it's like a plant. If you don't take care of it, 
It could die. It could go cold, but it could die too. It could die. It could die. It could die. It could get cold, but it could reach to the stage where it's totally gone. It it die, but it but even though it's it's die, it is something that could be revived too. That's right. It could be revived. Well, it, well okay, it, it's cold, but it, it, it could be revived. It's like, as they say, old fire stick, easy to catch back. Love could get cold. It gets cold. Even the Bible says, it was cold, love meant it was cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But if, if you don't take care of it, yes, it could go out, totally go out. Totally gone. Yes. Yeah, I, I believe. I, and, and you know, love is one of the most, seems to be one of the most difficult things to understand in in um in life and that is why we have to realize that without god without god we can't really love Mm -hmm. because as we say god is the one who came to revive that love to bring life back into that love Mm -hmm. and and i believe in truth and in fact love can die Amen. It can. Love can die because because when love reaches to a stage that it becomes cold, mm-hmm. and, and the Book of Revelation tells we after the first love, they lose that first love. Yeah. Jesus said, "I'm gonna do so." <laughs> so if you do yeah, so, yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah. it means that you're no good again. Yeah, just, 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 yeah. Just Rekindle. Just, just like a just like a candle, you have a candle, right? Mm-hmm. And when you go light the candle, you, once you get hot, you begin to, to melt the form. I know. It walks cool. <laughs> okay. Just from a communication, communication with warmness and appreciation, that's how we keep our heart. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so many husbands never verbalize their feelings of being disrespect. They feel that would seem egotistical in our culture or they don't have the words to express the wounds that are deep in their soul. Their wives have not, no idea what it's wrong, why they are distant, why they seem so unloving, and how to attract them back. Their wives usually try to love and more love and get really frustrated that nothing seems to be working. That is, that is so true. If, if a husband feels that his wife is disrespecting him, it doesn't matter how much you try to be tender and try to treat him in a loving kind of way. You run at the door when he comes in from work and you hug him and you have food on the table and stuff like that, everything, all of that ready. If he feels that you are disrespecting him and you are not um, addressing that, he will become distant. He will become withdrawn. He will be angry. And that's why we said before that one of the things that um, men crave for, men crave for respect. And respect from who? Men crave for respect from their wives. I mean, say, if on the job, nobody on the job will respect him, that he don't really care about that that much. But when he reaches home in his house, if he's not getting the respect that he knows he deserves to get from his wife, that is what drives men crazy. And ladies, you have, you have to understand, you have to see it on your husband's um, perspective also. Just like how you crave for your husband to love you, it's the same way he craves for you to respect him. You're, you're supposed to respect him. Is, is, is that a big deal to respect a husband? Ladies, is that a big deal to respect your husband? Is that a big deal for a husband to respect wife? A love wife? No, it's not. It's not. But uh, if... Um, I, I, I'm not trying to be biased. But it seems as though when you put it on the scale, when you put love um, for husband loving their wife and wives disrespecting their husband on the scale, it seems as though the scale where wives disrespecting their husband seems to be always going down. And I'm not trying to be biased. And I, I make that judgment by listening to a lot of people. I know a lot of guys love their wife. Well, by the way how they, they talk, by the way how they operate. You're talking that way and it's not true. <laughs> by the way, sometimes, sometimes a lot of them, a lot of these husbands, sometimes they give so much and they give so much and when they give, uh, it seems as though the, the woman, she don't have the 
like she don't have the ability to receive it. Is this week I was <laughs> somebody put a, a video on the internet uh, on on Facebook. I I saw it on my Facebook page. This <laughs> this girl who was on what did judge name this black um, marriage. Yeah, right. She she was on the the, the judge that deal with marriage, and uh, this guy treating her so nice, and she go to court because of the fact that she husband treating her too good. <laughs> husband telling her how he love her, and she don't understand how he can say that all the time that he love her. And she when somebody say they love you, she expect a backhand slap to to come after that. And the husband cooking and bringing food for her in bed and feeding her and taking care of her and all of that. And she just can't receive it. So I I know there are some men out there who are terrible where treating their wife is concerned. But it it seems as though, and as I said, I'm not trying to be biased. It seems like the, 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 um, the scale more going down on the side of the men not getting respect from their wives than on the side of the, 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 the man giving love to his wife. It seems more men seems to be crying out for respect than even though the women cry out for love. Some, most of the ladies, and I'm not trying to be biased, most of the ladies who cry out for love, they're getting, it, they're getting it, you know. And a lot of us as men, we don't have any more capacity to give more. It's not to say, I don't think most of us, especially more, um, those of us Christian men, I'm talking about good Christian men. Good Christian men committed, they're dedicated to their wife and everything. Most of us, I, I really don't, I don't have anything else that I'm holding back. I'm not holding back anything from my wife. I'm not, where love is concerned, I'm not holding back anything. And uh, sometimes, you know, if she's here right now, she will still talk in a way as if, well, I have something else that I could give to her. But the thing is, I don't have anything else. Oh, what, what I do understand, okay, let's, let's look at relationship. Um, let's say that, okay, um, uh, let's say, okay, you, you, the, both of us may come from different, um, same country, right? right? And sometimes, okay, that, that uh, other individual may look at that, that man and say, just um, scrutinize that person. I say, no, he don't deserve that. Don't deserve what? The love. The love. Even though like, he don't do nothing at all. Regardless of what, whatsoever he, he may implement, good things may implement in the relationship, I believe that that woman will pop us in the heart and say, he don't deserve that. Sometimes we can come to other family members, or family members around the, 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 the husband, family, or whatever, and all that alone could mess the woman mess up and say, okay, he don't deserve that love because of certain situations. Oh. But some people, okay, some, some other relationship, okay, for example, a man may marry to a woman from the United States, and he come from Grenada, right? Mm-hmm. And so that relationship could come good. Mm-hmm. But that's because knowing that person, you know, that, 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 that individual will withhold that love from that person not giving him. What, well, what all these other things, I mean. Because he might be a village boy. Yeah. All these things could happen. Oh, he's a village boy, okay. Village okay, boy, right, you know right. him, and he grew up or whatsoever. <laughs> and he, he, he just don't get that. Okay. He doesn't okay. deserve it. <laughs> well, maybe, it, I, I think he hit something there because. <laughs> When I was when I was growing up, I never I, I didn't want to marry to no girl from St. Vincent. I wanted was to get a girl from somewhere overseas. And I know it sounds bad. Because I see the way how girls was behaving and the way how they were treating um, men and the way how some of them were disrespectful. I'm not saying girls from away don't disrespectful too. Maybe it was foolish of me to think that way. <laughs> But I never, I never have any intention was to marry to anybody in my country. I only was to get somebody from somewhere else. Maybe, I, I'm, well, I'm lucky, I'm blessed to get somebody from another country who decide to fit in and we work together. But maybe I could have get somebody from a foreign land who could have been just as much as a, a snake or a knife, as some people just call them, as anybody from my country. But he, he hit on a point there. A lot of times, because of the fact that he's a village boy, Sometimes you tend not to respect him. That's right. And uh, sometimes, again, um, you know, maybe that same village boy that you have now is the one that came on to you when all was growing up and you turned him down 99 times. And then, you know, you end up in trouble. And then he's the same guy who come and rescue you and all of that. And still, even though he's the one that come and rescue you, still you don't give him the kind of respect that you're supposed to give him. That's right. But 
Any, it doesn't matter how much village boy he is or village girl he is. You, when you get into that relationship, all that change. You have to see him. Ladies, you, you need to see your husband just like how you see Christ. Just like how you see Christ, you see Jesus, you see, and you honor Jesus, you love Jesus. You're supposed to see your husband just like that. Husband, you're supposed to see your wife just like how you see Jesus. If you think Jesus deserves to be praised, deserves to be worshipped, deserves to be honored, is the same position. I'm not saying you have to put them on an equal level with Christ. But what I'm saying, just like how you look on Christ and you, want, you admire Him and you uh, worship Him and stuff like that, your wife had to be placed on a level, not equal with Christ, but she had to be up there. Your husband had to be up there too. Amen. So you can't respect Christ and don't respect your husband. Amen. You can't respect your, 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 your Christ and don't respect your wife. If you love Christ, you have to love your wife. If you don't love Christ, that means you can't love your wife. Amen. Not in the way that God really um, um, described it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor, if, yes. I, if, if Christ say, Christ say, I can't have one and I ain't funny. Because, <laughs> when they say Christ, they're going to say, what they say? Oh, that's Mary, that's Mary boy. Uh-huh. That's Joseph boy. Uh, uh, you know? So he has to leave his area and go to another area. Because the way that they ridicule him. Yeah. So just just as me, okay, for another man, like, oh, I know him. He's Gwen boy. He's Lawrence boy. Yeah, Who's kind of boy, 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 all the time? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all his respect just go. Yeah, but and all his kind of, all, all his kind of it, it, it shouldn't, yeah, especially where being Christian is concerned. Even though the both of you grew up in the same village and all they go to school to the same place and all they grow up together play marble together, roast banana and roast bread food together. As I said, when you become husband and wife, men, ladies, it's supposed to uh, be different. It's got, it, it got to be a change. You've got to honor your husband. You've got to honor your wife. You've got to love your wife. You've got to respect your wife. If you're not doing it, our prayers will be in vain. It's a waste of time for a man to pray to God if he don't love his wife. It's a waste of time. Huh? Yes. And ladies too, it's a waste of time for you pray if you not if you don't um, honor your husband. It's a waste of time that you praying if you're not honoring him. You gotta get that honor part straightened out first. And as I said before, we have a shortage. There is a problem. There's a deficiency in the area of respect where husband and wife is concerned. There's a there's an area. There's a deficiency on the ladies' part because I'm hearing too many men crying out. And saying that their, their, their wives don't respect them. And as I was saying before, I was trying to address. I was trying to address. Uh, as I said before, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that we as men, we perfect. We have a lot of mistakes. We mess up a lot. We mess up more times than our wives. But as my observation, my observation, when I look at some of these good Christian men in the church, and I put myself, you know, amongst them, I don't think a lot of us have anything else that we could give out. We don't have anything else to give out. I'm, I was making myself an example. I'm not holding back on my wife in any way where loving her is concerned. I may not be, I'm, okay, I'm coming to you guys. I may not be like the North American man who likes to walk the street and hold hands. I don't walk the street and hold hands. I, 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 I don't walk the street and hold hands because it's something I do. I wasn't grow up into that culture. You know, I'm not a going out type of guy, always going out for lunch and going out for dinner and all this kind of thing. But I, I, even though I'm not doing these things, I think I'm compensating in other areas. So I don't have any other thing that I could give to her that I should be given. Go ahead, whoever. Sister Cole, Sister Mackenzie, who's going to talk? Yes. Apologize to the wife too. What the wife need to apologize to the husband too. They need to do that. Men need to make whatever men defenses. Okay. Yes, sir. She put on your mind. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 uh, the, the thing is, eh, the thing is, 
I, I think, I, I think, I think, I think the, the, the I love you, the, the I love you thing, right? I love you coming from the husband to the wife. Uh, if it's not built into your culture, it's kind of hard to get into it. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to change and we're supposed to, um, you know, but when you, when you check, uh, and that, that kind of I love you thing that kind of hard to come from us men from the Caribbean is, is the older guys, the older guys like me, Brother Mackenzie and, you know, Brother, maybe Brother Lewis and stuff. I don't know Brother Lewis, but the older guys, the older guys, because in our culture, we don't grow up and hear people, say, husbands saying to their wife all the time, you know, I love you, I love you. No, it, it, yeah, you don't hear that. When but, you first met your wife, what did you tell her? When you first met her? When you first met her, what did you tell her? When you first met her? Data, what did you tell her? Yes, you know, yes, yes, uh, yes, I said that. Yes, I agree with that. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying, um, Sister Lewis, we're not really so accustomed. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a culture. We don't, it's not built into our culture. It's like walking the street, walking the street and hold hands. Uh, I don't know how so much of us say as that. older men. You're about hold well, hold up. Okay, well, I'm using an example. How, how many of us here? As older men who grow up in the kind of culture that, you know, we, we came from, will walk the street up here, you're going down to Toronto, and you're walking the street and holding your wife's hand, or you're on the subway and you're making out and you're kissing. A- any one of you guys make out with y- your wife on the subway? I, I sometimes, my wife go on the road and, and we hold arms um, together. Well, good for you. Good. Good. Okay. But it's not, not everybody, not everybody accustomed with that. But what I'm saying, I know personally, I am lacking in that area. So I try to compensate in other, other areas. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a going out type of guy. I'm not, you know, you will see me going out for dinner and going out for lunch. And I got my home. I'd rather to eat at home. i rather to eat at home. No, but the Caribbean men, like if you and them going somewhere, the man quite in front. I mean, you behind and you run into the you don't want nobody to know you do one. He's running. What kind of thing that is? Okay, so, uh, all right. So, okay, we, we, so we could walk on that. We could walk on that. So walk side by side. Yes, we side are Side by side. side. We are going together. But you fly that idea. Where are we running go? Well, we're going together. Well, um, uh, um, it's, 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 uh, well, my wife complained to me recently with that. She said, um, what's wrong with you? I the hell know you the far out there. I, I, well, that is true. I say that too. That um, well, we, I don't know, but you see me. A guy called me recently. I meet. We don't have any excuse for that. He say um, you don't look wrong at all. I say no. When I go in, I go in. I don't look wrong. I don't want to be attractive here. But I think a woman too. When we walk in, woman get a tendency doing so. Looking see who doing so. Looking see who coming. And and then they slow down themselves. Well, sometimes you ain't see them doing that, and you in front. You you in front. Even if sometimes my wife went walking, I tell she the best result to get out of the exercise. She had to try and walk fast. And and I can't. I I can't. It's hard for me now at this age to to really. You know, move like that. Well, you had to. Listen, well, had to I, I ain't gonna support it's you on that. What you had to do? You had to. You had to take her at the level that she at. Well, the same thing has happened to me. When me and my wife, me and my wife go for a walk, I, I walk fast. And there are times that, you know, because when I walk in, she running. She when I walk in because my legs long. I walk and she running. Okay. And after a while, I got to you know you got to slow down to keep up with her. So you had to get back to where she could um, keep up with you. But, you know, some of these things, we, I know we could make changes, but uh, a lot of us who are already over the hill, for instance, there's some, in some department, I don't think I could really fit in. I can't really fit in. The way how um, Andel will conduct himself with his wife in public, I can't really fit into that. And if my wife expecting me to fit into that, these things are not going to happen. You're not going to see me walking the street and holding hands and making out on the subway and all these kind of things. Them things, them things is not in my book. Maybe if I grew up in this society, maybe it, it might have happened. But this is not to say, you, you, what we have to understand, it don't, mean, it don't mean because, 
It, it doesn't mean because a man is not showing affection in public that he don't love his wife. A lot of people take, they make a mistake. For instance, they will see, oh, your pastor and your wife, they don't hug up and kiss up in church and stuff like that, you know, and maybe things not going good um, with them. But you, you can't, you, you, I, I, I am not about to put my love on display for nobody. Me ain't putting my love on no display for nobody. I remember the last church we was going to, um, they had a wedding, and Pastor Taylor said, all the marriage couple, I want them to come up here and kiss. And, and you mean a passionate kiss, eh? Uh-huh. And those, some of them run up there and they kiss. And then they say, Minister Duncan, they want him and his wife to come up and kiss. My wife come up here, come up to the front. And she waiting at me. I said, you could still be and wait. Yes, you think I'm going to put my... You think I'm going to put my love on this place when, to please who? No. What, what happened? You know, love, you know, where, where uh, sex and all of these things related to this concern. It's private. It's private. It's between me and my wife. I don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to put it on no display for nobody to see. I don't have to kiss my wife in church so that you guys could see Pastor Duncan love your wife. I, I remember um, there was this guy. There was this guy um, in my wife's family. He passed away now. He, he this guy he got married, and you know he'll come up by us and visit he and his wife. And, you know, right on the couch, they, they're kissing each other and they're smooching and they're making out. They will leave and they're going home. They're holding hands and they're kissing and stuff like that. Next thing you know, you know, a week after they're calling, he and his wife have been fighting, he's biting up. All over the body, he's biting up like a dog. Anybody could check, you could check, check my wife's skin. See if you see any bite on her. She not have a bite on her. But I don't kiss her in no public. I, whatever I had to do, I do it when I'm in my privacy. It's between me and she. You understand? So we, we, can't, we can't judge people in that, in that kind of way. It has some men who have that thing in them and they could do that in public. But if, you, if you're doing that in public and your life rotten at home, it's a waste of time. It's only a Hollywood thing. Just like the, we're not better than these um, Hollywood stars, movie stars that do their thing in public and, when, and their life is rotten. It's best your life is good and decent. You know, in, in public, and then you come out here and making a show, and then you can't back it up. Yes, sister. Maybe, yes, maybe some guys, there are some guys who probably could adapt and get into them, get into that. But then there are other people who wouldn't. Um, you know, get into that. And you have to respect that. You know, um, because uh, as I said before, uh, I don't think, I never hear my wife complain to anybody and say, well, you know, me and Pastor, we don't walk and hold hands. And so I never hear she complain. I, I don't give my wife flowers. I never hear she, she don't care about flowers. She care about getting a nice dress. You know, she, you know, she care about getting a nice dress. That, that, that's things that she, she care about. You know, she care about knowing that, you know, money is there to pay the rent. The, the mortgage. She care about when she want to go and shop, when the store call up, call up that she know that money is in the account that she could go and have a spending spree. That's what she care about. But she don't care about me not walking the street and holding her hand. We walk the street, yes. We go, we walk, we run. But you're not going to see us on the street walking and cuddling. No, it's not. That's not a part of me. That's not the kind of person I am. And whoever could do that you know, I take my hats off to them. But that doesn't mean because this man, he's not doing that, that he don't love his wife. As I said before, we don't have to be a, men who, in my boat, and, you know, living the way I live, you don't have to put your love on display to please nobody. And you guys who want to put your love on display, when I see you putting it on display, I don't put you up higher. I don't really say, oh, boy, he really loves his wife. No. Some of these guys who act like that, they're very sneaky. And in, in behind closed door, they, they're no good. I, I, I know, I know a, a few guys that I meet with already in church. And they're very cool and nice. And they're nice in church. They can't even lift their foot. They can't even um, raise their hand to kill a fly. And when you hear their wife talk about how they're behaving at home, 
it's rotten. And then a man like me who has a big voice and in church, you hear Pastor, don't forget about it, he said this and he'll say that. You never hear my wife go nowhere and tell nobody, well, I doing that to she at home. Or I doing that, I, I cut her off from my bank account. She can't get into my account to spend anything. You never hear this kind of thing. But these quiet guys, and when you see these quiet guys in church, mm-hmm. Brother Louis is a quiet guy. I hear people make um, comments about him already. That they say he's a quiet guy. And uh, sometimes you see these quiet guys in church, and you hear sometimes my wife will come and say, I wish you could have been quiet like him. But I'm not saying anything bad about you, brother. But I'm saying, when you see people quiet, 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 most of the time, behind closed doors, they're not really like that. And, and the guy who you see outside, and you know, he, you know, saying things and he acting as if, well, he have this kind of bad boy missing him. He is a lamb on the inside when he's at home. So you can't really judge people where that is concerned. You have to take every man um, individually. You, you have to judge every book by its cover. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, everybody has to learn to adjust together. Uh, one thing I do tell my wife, Pastor. I tell my wife, I say, and you are beautiful. Whether you put on a nice dress or you have a simple dress, mm-hmm. you are beautiful. Whether you um, put on a hairstyle or you got your hair natural or you put on anything for me, you are beautiful. I let my wife know that. Right? Because for me, I see my wife even looking better than when she rubs her face with something. You know what I mean? Because she, she seems to be more, more natural and full when she put on. Some people, when they put on things, they, they bring out beauty. So well, I, I, don't, I don't like the hairstyle. Mm-hmm. I don't like the hairstyle that they just you put know? on. And I already told my wife I don't like them. When she come home with them, I just say, you look like an Indian chief. And we don't really like these hairstyles. I rather, you know, if she, an Indian, one of those Indian chiefs, all she needs is the bow in she hair. And I just tell her, you know, I rather, <laughs> I rather you, you know, put on something that fits you, you know, because she has good color. She, she's right. a beautiful woman. You don't need to put on some of these things I see. She does go and buy at the store. I say, we are buying these things for they don't look good. So, you know, um, I rather see her look natural. And, you know, she, she, and, and I love her for who she is. But you don't have to go and buy all of these fancy things that they have out there and to put on your head and do all of these kind of things. You know, um, and some of them, it will really fit the, the person. If it fits you, it's, right. it's okay. But most of the time, it's not, it will already fit them. So, 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 I, so, so recently, we went out to a dinner. So she went and said she's going to, because I normally will cut her hair and shape her hair. But I didn't have a good proper scissors, so I didn't really do it. So she went to the salon. So when she come back, she said, you look good? I said, you look like a top knock. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, she said, what do you mean by I look like a top knock? I, well, I remember she, you know, we call it mockingbird. Right, you know, right. You got it, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so like a, and, and when, she, when she went and they put on Facebook, she, for a sister, right the boy home, son come, mommy, you don't look good in that. <laughs> you know? That. So I already tell her that and she might have feel away. Mm-hmm. But I tell she the exact truth. And sometimes when you tell your wife that you look good just like how you do, don't don't think it's like um nah. You don't I don't look good. Put on the dress, you come to me. How you look? I say look that look good. Ah, uh, I might stab a while, that is my stab I say. Now, and you want to change it four or five times when you want me to get approval? Well, yeah, you know, we have to give them the prerogative to, to do these things. Even though I don't really like some of the hairstyle that she will buy and put on. You know, I, I ain't going to rip it off. No. You know, if she wants to wear it. And maybe, maybe you guys talk about the husband not walking with the wife. Maybe, some of the re- maybe that's some of the reason why some of the guys don't want to walk with their wife. Because you walking on and she looking like an Indian chief, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why you want to walk? Anyway, <laughs> 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 God bless us. We have to go. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, brethren, we have to leave it there for today. <laughs> Next week, God's willing, we'll pick up. And we don't really get to what the ladies are saying about us as men yet. We just get into the end of what um, men are saying about ladies in terms of uh, disrespecting them. So, brethren, as we said, 
Um, if something is said here that fall in your garden, if you know you need to apologize to your husband, you need to apologize to your wife, you need to um, do that. Right. If you know that you don't put your husband up on the pedestal that he's supposed to be on, you need to pick him up, put him up there. If you know you need to put your wife up on the pedestal where she's supposed to be, put her up there. Amen. Your wife's supposed to be the number one woman in your life. Amen. You can't, you know, sometimes, we as men, sometimes, you know, we, we talk angry to um, our wives. And when we meet with some lady on the outside, sometimes we don't, we're not in a relationship with them, but we have a more pleasing way of, of talking with them. And sometimes it go both ways too. Sometimes you find, yes, sometimes there are some ladies, they will express more confidence in, in a next man that is not their husband than what they will express in their husband. And these things just hurt us. You know, it hurts us. Just like how things hurt you when your wife will talk to a, a next woman and you have a pleasing voice. And when you talk to you, you have a rough voice, that hurts you. Just the same way, if you express confidence in a, a next man or some other man outside and you don't express confidence in him, he hurts him too. He cut him like a knife. So, all of us, we need to make changes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Praise right. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord bless us. Uh, brother, tell us what to ask God blessing as we close. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this privilege, God, and this opportunity to hear, God, the things we are to do to each other. As you say to us, Jesus, the answer is that we must love each other, God. Love for one another, God. Caring for one another. Respecting one another, God. It's not an easy road. But with your enabling power, God, you were able to work together. Help us to make adjustments with God. So we, as your people, God, could be the light of the world. Others will be able to see and understand. And help us, God, that we'll be example to our children and to those that are around us, God. Help us to realize, oh God, that we need to make adjustments to please each other, God. Not so much help, God, but for you, God, because you're the one who we are pleasing, God. You're the one who gave us the instruction and the commandment to love and to be joyful, to be helpful, God. To, to, to be caring for each other, God. We are not able of ourselves, oh God. But we thank you because you are able to give us that strength and that grace, the ability to do it, God. So we thank you this morning, God, that we can enjoy ourselves, we can laugh, oh God, and we can do the things in spite of the fact that they are hurting and they are pain. Yes, God, we can love. Thank yes, you. Yes, God, we can forgive. We thank you this morning for all that you will do for us. In Jesus' name of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.